Talk Radio 77 WABC. Well, well, well. Oh, you're not even going to let me finish the No, 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 hillbilly boy. I know ever since you come back from Milwaukee and you see that the future vice president may well be a fellow hillbilly, J.D. Vance. And I always believe, as you know, I never trust anybody with three names. Mm-hmm. Never trust. Did anybody. I tell you I'm going by J.C. Flippin these days? By yes, the way. yes. And by the <laughs> way, I see you uh, attacking flies. Uh, we uh, we have flies all over here. Yeah, but they're much better than they were recently. Well, that's true. But they they love hillbillies. They, I mean, they do. When you see a hillbilly, what do you see generally circling over the hillbilly's the, head? The flies and the and the yeah. dust cloud and the whole thing. I notice they're all over you. But now let me pimp slap you and unpack the news bag that neither you nor our news director, Noam Layden, wanted to touch or didn't touch that is more important than any story that occurred, I would say, in two weeks. And that's taken in a lot, right? Okay, yeah. The attempted assassination, the RNC convention, you the, were there. The data outage. Right. The, no, 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 no. The cyber attack. Oh, cyber attack. Uh, obviously, uh, Princess uh, Harris uh, being given a coronation mm-hmm. by the DNC. Mm-hmm. All of those extraordinarily important uh, stories by themselves, they would dominate the discussion. But the one story that received no attention except from me all weekend long and in the first two days of this broadcast was Tony Blinken, Secretary of State, Yonkers boy, who said that Iran is two weeks away from having a nuclear bomb. Instead of being um, at least a year away from having the breakout capacity of producing fissile material for a nuclear weapon, is now probably one or two weeks away from doing that. One or two weeks away. Now, you know damn well that BB today, even with all the Democrats turning their back on him and walking out, is going to be obsessed with this. Remember when he was at the um, uh, General Assembly, you know, the annual march of the dictators, tyrants, and despots who come into our city and tie up the traffic. Remember, he had the charts. He made what looked like a bomb from the days of when we had uh, Rocket J, Squirrel, and Bullwinkle. Remember the bomb with Boris and Natasha? Right? He said, they're 80% on their way there. Remember, he had it in levels? Mm-hmm. Well, according to Blinken, they're two weeks away. So that means I anticipate that B.B. is making the rounds to let Biden know, probably on a Zoom conference, because, you know, hey, Joe, I I still got COVID. COVID Joe, we'll call him. COVID Joe. And Princess Harris, oh, I'm with a sorority today in Indianapolis. I don't have time for you, B.B. And even with Trump on Friday before Shabbos, I think he will relate to them that he's going in and he's got to take out their nuclear weapons development Because if not, he knows that bomb is meant for him. The Ayatollah has said two bombs we're going to get from this nuclear weapons uh, patch. One we're going to drop on Israel. We know they'll turn us into a glass highway. And if any of us survive, we'll try to drop the second one on the big state in the U.S. of A. Why doesn't anybody ever listen to these people? Why, 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 Cenk? You don't think it's a possibility? Uh, no, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I, I, the last time I think anybody was seriously thinking about the nuclear war thing was not that long ago with the whole Russia, Ukraine and, you know, Putin kind of doing his saber rattling. But yeah, there's not a lot of people paying why, attention why, why, to why, why did you and Noam poo poo this? Could I hear that again? Could I hear Tony Blinken over the weekend? Uh, blackout news coverage by everybody except for yours truly, Curtis Lee, on all the hours in which it's WABC always broadcasting, Curtis. Instead of being um, at least a year away from having the breakout capacity of producing fissile material for a nuclear weapon, is now probably one or two weeks away from doing that. I noticed you were looking for a lifeline from the news director. Well, I wanted to ask, Noam, if it's true that we've been burying this story. I don't necessarily think so. I mean, we've been talking a lot about there was the drone attack in T- Tel Aviv. And there's speculation that that may be tied to aspects of terrorism. That has nothing we to do with We know that the terrorism uh, is sponsored know, no, 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 by don't, Iran. Don't get so defensive. I'm not being it has defensive. nothing to do with I'm connecting a, the dots. a nuclear weapon. So that's strike one. Okay. Strike two. Oh, no. Couldn't be but uh, the guy to carry the water for Eric Adams. When all of a sudden Eric Adams became the expert on the shooter boy there in Butler County claiming, oh, this is because you see, it's what I've been saying. He's probably involved in social networking, TikTok and all these platforms. 
And I said right away, what are you doing? You're stupid, Eric. You are one hell of a stupid guy. You don't know anything about this. And then he had to walk it back yesterday. Yeah, and I stand corrected. There was a, a post that was sent of him comment. It could have been AI. It could have been altered. You know, just goes to show the how we all can fall victims of some of this uh, distorted information out there. Uh, I do know I've been extremely vociferous around uh, the radicalizations of our young people. Something plays into a person climbing on a rooftop with an automatic weapon and shooting someone. What the hell? Just admit you jumped a queue like so many people. You 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 made an observation that was completely untrue. This guy has no social networking footprint whatsoever. His friends said it. People in the community said it. I oh, mean, OK, but hold on a second. Weren't you just yesterday spouting off about like various conspiracy theories tied into the alleged, you know, the assassination attempt oh, oh, on July 13th. You, so and you now you're is, going to tell me that this 20 year old guy so has no social uh, media presence. So and that's just totally so normal. So you're like Sid Rosenberg. You're like Bill O'Reilly. So you're like a three no, I, humped camel. No, I was actually much more sensitive, uh, more receptive of the stuff you were talking about look, yesterday look than other def- people. Look how defensive you get. No, 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 no. I'm saying to you that you think it's normal that a 20 year old guy supposedly has no social media presence. He's a nerd. He's a dweeb. Oh, okay. He's right. a schmendrick. And he's, he's got a no pitcher. social media presence. Right. Exactly. Right. And that's what I said. Okay. So that's number number one. Don't you think the mayor's kind of stupid to have said well, that? Well, yeah, because, I mean, I think that it's outrageous that any prominent Democrat is going to say, oh, yeah, people are getting radicalized online and against it. Very good. Yeah, what do you think? Because All you right. call now, the guy a danger to democracy. Now, the last one, which I'm going to go into uh, in the next segment. Uh, He was right out of the box Friday morning, right out of the box Friday morning. This was not it was not a cyber attack. I recall when I was briefed by the former mayor, he says one of the major concerns is dealing with any form of IT uh, outage, including if it is a cyber attack. We need to be prepared. Brief. By Comrade Bill de Blasio, the part-time mayor, the dope from Park Slope, along with his crooked wife, Charlene, both of them potheads, stoners. And he is, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, hey, de Blasio briefed me on this. So he immediately before anybody else said it's not a cyber attack. How many days are we into this, huh? It'll be come, you know, tomorrow night. It'll be a full week. 40,000 computers still down in New York City. Uh, Delta barely able to get any flights in the sky. And finally, Boudicier, Boudicier, Boudicier surfaced probably from another one of his many vacations, you know, family time, to address it. Do you think maybe he should walk that back? What do you think? Well, all I can tell you is this. As a news guy, I'll let you know that CrowdStrike today says that the faulty software update was sent out because a bug caused the firm's quality control system to miss flawed data. (laughs) Of course they're going to say that. They're getting sued up the wazoo. They're going to say that some guy, probably from Red China that they hired, one of those guys crossing the border in the business suits, you know, I'm IT, you know, I'm IT uh, rated. Well, there's also this, and I'm I'm reading from this report. It says uh, in the New York Post, that the update was released as a routine step in CrowdStrike's rapid response plan, which is meant to update cybersecurity systems to combat new threats. Oh, and who put the code in? Who put the code in? Who was the first one to break the story that said it was a cyber attack? Nancy Sliwa, who's an e-attorney, who's had a cyber attack on her many years ago. She recognized everything. And so how many days later since Friday? How many? Can, can you count them on your fingers there? Well, uh, as of right now, we're at day five. Yes. Wow. And Booty J finally emerges and CrowdStrike finally emerges. Nancy was on it from day one. She was right. She's coming here tomorrow. She's going to shame you, shame Gnome Lady, and shame everybody else. And finally, we got Eric Adams. He was in a cyber attack. 40,000 computers still down in New York City. Do me a favor, James Flippin. Get the hell out of here. It's the Rip and Read. Talking about featuring Curtis Lewa. Talk Radio 77 WABC. Talk Radio 77 WABC. Curtis Lewa. Curtis Lewa. Rip and Read. Check this out. This is the Rip and Read. Be 
featuring Curtis Lewa. Now to the Bernard McGurk Studios of 77 WABC and Curtis Lewa. This is the Rip and Read. So many of you want to believe, as James Flippin uh, said in the beginning of this Rip and Read hour, that, oh, it was a tech outage that caused all this mishigash since um, Donald Trump finished his acceptance speech in Milwaukee late at night on Thursday and then hours later in almost quick order. The airlines, all of them were affected. Businesses were affected. Banking, financial institutions, medical supply, you name it, Fortune 500 companies. Their computerized operations had ground to a halt. And I remember at that very moment in the morning before I came on, Justin Ellick, you can track it at 7.15 as I do every morning with Sid Rosenberg. 7.15, Wednesday morning. I announced that it was a cyber attack because of what Nancy Sliwa, my wife, says, who's always with us Tuesdays and Thursdays. She'll be with us tomorrow on the Rip and Read. An e-attorney who had been the victim of a similar cyber attack uh, years before. But immediately that morning, uh, a guy who knows nothing about nothing, Eric Adams, really is proving incredibly to be more stupid by the day. He's like uh, Jeopardy. You know, when they Jeopardy and they want to click that they know the answer, he always wants to be the first to come in with the answer. And nine out of ten times, he couldn't be more hopelessly wrong. So on this one, he came to the microphones in the most powerful media center in the world, New York City, as the mayor, and spoke as if he were representing the federal government the state government, as if he were representing Interpol, the international policing agency. He knew nothing about nothing, but he was so quick to say this was not a cyber attack. This was not, it was not a cyber attack. I recall when I was briefed by the former mayor, he says one of the major concerns is dealing with any form of IT uh, outage, including if it is a cyber attack, we need to be prepared. The former mayor he's referring to is the stoner, the pothead, uh, Bill de Blasio, the part-time mayor, who single-handedly took a Miley Cyrus wrecking ball to the city that we love with his crooked wife, Charlene, best known for sitting on the back porch of Gracie Mansion every night smoking Maui Waui and Hindu Kush. So Eric Adams is getting advice on what is a tech glitch versus a uh, a cyber attack from a stoner, a pothead, who's turned out to be a total criminal, stealing $1.5 billion of a fund that was supposed to go to care for the emotionally disturbed, a program that was non-existent, a Fugazi program called Thrive. This is what the mayor based his statement on right out of the box Friday morning. He couldn't be more hopelessly wrong. Now, the guy who should have weighed in on it, but waited until yesterday, was Buttigieg, 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 Buttigieg. A uh, boy wonder of South Bend, a man who they say is destined at one, di- one day to be president of the United States because he speaks nine languages, including Norwegian. Like, what the hell does anybody care about somebody speaking Norwegian? But he finally emerged yesterday... And still he's stumbling and fumbling around about all these airline delays and cancellations, especially by the number one carrier in the world, Delta. And so uh, he wants to continue to call it an IT outage. DOT is launching an investigation into the breakdown of operations and into the customer service situation. Uh, Wow. How many days after, let's see, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, five days later, he's finally launching an investigation. I guess he was taking family time to be with his husband 
and his child, who I think now is about two years old. But this guy's always taking family time off. Remember East Palestine? Same thing. He couldn't get there because he was too busy with his husband, wife. I don't know how he refers to him, her, they, whatever, uh, and the child. Then he went on to say, hey. Hey, we're going to get down to the bottom of this. I'm hearing a lot of things I'm very concerned about, including people being on hold for hours and hours trying to get a new flight, uh, people having to sleep on airport floors, even accounts of unaccompanied minors being stranded in airports, unable to get on a flight. Don't you feel so confident, Justin Ellick? Uh, Buttigieg, 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 boy wonder. Mayor of South Bend, who was on his way to becoming uh, the Democratic nominee to take on President Donald Trump in 2020, until all of a sudden Joe Biden decided, I'm the only one who can beat Trump in the polls. Step aside, kid. Your day will come. And he made him transportation secretary. Transportation czar. He has done a horrible job. Remember the supply shortage? Buttigieg. Remember East Palestine? Buttigieg. And in this situation, five days later, where we're still feeling the effects of this cyber attack, again, I can't say it enough, 40,000 computers still down in New York City alone, major air carriers, specifically Delta, all kinds of problems, and there are still global problems, still global problems. The one who nailed it was Nancy. And she's always part of the Rip and Read Tuesdays and Thursdays and the extended Rip and Read on Sunday nights from 8 to 10. She does the deep dive, but when it comes to cyber issues, she's considered one of the experts. She's an e-attorney. She does this for corporations when they need to do a file dump and figure out if they are culpable or if they're vulnerable to lawsuits. And they trust her to go in, do the deep dive, which she does, and she'll either let them know, fight, 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 like Trump said in court, because you're free and clear, or you better settle now, because this is just the tip of the iceberg. I've already found four different ways that they can sue you and win in civil court. That's what she has done. She's proficient at that. She has been targeted for cyber attacks because of the sensitive material she's handled in the past. She explained that Friday morning when she uh, she definitely convinced me that it was a cyber attack. You knew right away that what they were describing would lead to the dreaded blue screen of death. So how did this how did they turn the tables on you? The investigator, the inquisitor, the person doing the deep dive to the point where they destroyed your entire computer. Well, no, I mean, again, th- this is really the problem that you don't know how it happens. That's why you have this security software installed on your computer so that when you're online, when you're visiting all these sites, when you're doing these things, you're not going to get any of this malicious software, anything attacking you. So. Uh, you know, unfortunately, it happens before you even turn the computer on. And when you go to turn it on, it's right there. It, when you see that screen, there is no way to recover. It's not a, a normal type of issue. And at that point, the computer's just done for. So to whatever extent you, you haven't saved anything, chances are you probably lost the majority of the stuff on the computer. Done for. And now, as James Flippin mentioned, CrowdStrike says... That a bug in quality control process led to the botched update. They keep fumbling and stumbling themselves worse than Joe Biden on his uh, worst day. And their stock is on the descent. We know what it was. Somebody put in a code. They won't say who because you know something? They don't know, Justin Ellick. They have no controls. No security on their own corporate entity in Austin, Texas. And you don't want to miss it tomorrow. Nancy will once again join us as she does every Tuesday and Thursday on the Rip and Read here, 12 to 1, on WABC to further explain what was a cyber attack, Eric Adams. Check this out. It's the Rip and Read featuring Curtis Lewa. Talk Radio 77 WABC. Now, to the Bernard McGurk Studios of 77 WABC and Curtis Lewa. Curtis doesn't know about you, but he rips and reads. This is the Rip and Read. All 
up on the hill today, FBI director, and it's not Ephraim Zimbalist Jr. From the TV show we uh, grew up with, that was actually produced and directed from behind the scenes by J. Edgar Hoover and his boyfriend, uh, the number two guy in the FBI at that time. No, 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 no. We instead have Christopher Ray, whose claim to fame before he became FBI director. He was one of the personal attorneys to then Governor Shamu El Jefe, Chris Christie. But he was the attorney who took Christie's cell phone that had the texts and emails about Bridgegate, and he kept it locked in his safe. He would not give it up. And so when it was time for James Comey to go... Shamu El Hefe, Chris Christie, convinced Trump, oh, go with my guy. Go with my guy, Ray. No qualifications to be FBI director. He is an incompetent of the worst type. Whether it's the FBI, uh, originally when the acronym meant forever busting Italians, and then after 9-11, forever busting Islamists, and now forever busting anybody affiliated with Trump. I mean, let's face it, that's what they've become. And it's Christopher Ray, who's a person of absolute no consequence, whose claim to fame is that he hid in his safe Chamu El Jefe Chris Christie's cell phone that had all the information about Bridgegate. But anyway, let's go to what the incompetent had to say on the Hill today about the assassin. The boy who would have assassinated President uh, Donald Trump. By the way, great job, Nino, in our news department who got these cuts because Ray has been testifying. He continues to testify, but he's a lot smoother than the director of the Secret Service who impaled herself yesterday. She should have committed Harry Carey like Japanese officials do when they disgrace themselves, disgrace their agency and disgrace their country. But she has disappeared off the radar screen. So it's it's Ray's, it's Ray's time up in the batter's box to try to explain this. So he was saying earlier today that the shooter may be dead, room temperature, cadaver and formaldehyde. But the FBI investigation continues. I feel so much better. The shooter may be deceased, but the FBI's investigation is very much ongoing. All right, now, uh, Justin Ellick, I need you to do this. Please follow up for tomorrow, uh, preferably for when I'm on with Sid Rosenberg, as I am every Monday through Friday, 715. Okay, Uh, he said the shooter is dead. I'm assuming the FBI has control of his body. I'm assuming they did an autopsy. What are the results of the autopsy? And by the way, when will the wake and the funeral be? As we saw the guy's father emerge Shopping at Walmart yesterday in Bethel or Park or Place or wherever that is in nowhere, Pennsylvania. And when the father was asked questions about his son's activities, he said, I'm not at liberty to say I'm cooperating with the FBI investigation. And my personal attorneys have told me to take the code of Omerta. So the father and the mother of the shooter, they're all lawyered up, as is his oldest sister. So they ain't answering any any questions, any time, any place, anywhere near, except maybe in the future if they get paid to sort of do an expose, you know, to do a special interview for some network who says, we never pay for interviews. They all pay for, quote, exclusive interviews to be continued. Then Ray said that a drone was recovered from Shooter Boy, First reported by yours truly uh, when we were discussing what had transpired and how I said, oh, man, this was a hit. Uh, This was not a lone wolf. This was way more complicated than thinking this guy was able to get access to the location of the rally hours in advance and was flying a drone overhead to do surveillance. You heard it first with yours truly here at WABC. Oh weekend long, morning, noon, and night. But of course, nobody paid attention to it because it was Curtis Sliwa. 
They were listening to people who knew nothing about nothing at that time. In fact, let's go to the audio tape. So uh, we have recovered a drone uh, that the shooter uh, appears to have used. Uh, it's being exploited and analyzed by the FBI lab. Uh, the drone was recovered uh, in his vehicle. So at the time of the shooting, the drone was in his vehicle uh, with the controller. So he not only was able to pull a drone out in the morning, in light, when it was about 9 or 10 in the morning and people were assembling for the rally. You know how the MAGA people are. They, they show up days ahead of time. And security was there. Private security was there. Police were there. Uh, supposedly, the, sec- uh, the Secret Service was there. But it turns out they were not there for the final meeting to give final orders and instructions to all the various law enforcement agencies who were handling that, that day's events which was President Trump's last public appearance before he would go to Milwaukee and receive the nomination of the convention. The last public appearance. Secret Service did not show up for the meeting that they were hosting that morning. Instead, there was Drone Boy, the shooter, who was flying his drone openly, visually, boldly, and brazenly all around. Nobody went up. Nobody said anything to him. Nobody said, what are you doing with that drone? Who are you? Are you one of us? You got any ID? Nothing. And by the way, when they finally got to his body after one, two, or three sniper squads shot his uh, head right off of his shoulders, he had no ID on him whatsoever. Right then and there, that would have been it. It would have cuffed him. It would have taken him for questioning. Uh, Nobody would have shot at President Donald Trump that day. Anyway, here was uh, FBI Director Ray talking about how FBI agents recovered three explosives. Explosive devices. There were, uh, we've recovered three devices, two uh, in his vehicle and one back in his residence. Three explosive devices. You've heard little, if anything, more about that. Then when we first reported it here, Noam Layden with me on the other side of midnight, we're talking about those three explosive devices. Very little attention has been paid to that because he didn't trigger them off. We don't know what the intention was. You just have to assume that he was going to set them off, if nothing more, maybe as a distraction to think that he could get away, right? Yeah, he's going to get away. (laughs) They wanted him dead. He wasn't going anywhere. Plus, you had three sniper teams, two of them now claiming that they were responsible for the kill shot. To be continued, then FBI Director Ray was asked if uh, Shooter Boy had any uh, cooperators uh, or accomplices. Uh, Whether or not there are any co-conspirators, accomplices. At this point, have you developed any evidence to so suggest that there are any accomplices or, or cooperators or assisters? Not at this time, but again, the investigation's ongoing. Notice how smooth Ray is, unlike the former director of uh, Secret Service yesterday, who would say, you know, in a very harsh way, uh, I, haven't, uh, I haven't had access to that information yet. I, notice Ray just pushes it forward. It's like kicking the can down the road. Well, you know, the investigation continues. Uh, Let me give you a hint about law enforcement and criminal justice uh, divisions. You could have been the subject of a possible indictment five years ago. And when, uh, let's say, the media or somebody asks, uh, U.S. attorney for the Southern District, you had X, Y, Z under investigation. Uh, In fact, you conducted a grand jury hearing on them five years ago. Uh, Have you determined the outcome of that? No, it's an ongoing investigation. 50 years from now, it'll be an ongoing investigation. That's the technology that they use. Then FBI director was asked about whether Shooter Boy had fired eight times at President Donald Trump at the rally in Butler. Did Crooks fire eight shots? We have recovered uh, eight cartridges on the roof. Eight cartridges on the roof. All right. I would have appreciated it if uh, Ray would have been asked, how did the gun get to the roof? 
because nobody yet has said that they saw Shooter Boy with the AR-15. They've seen him with the scanning device. They've seen him with every other device, a backpack. They've seen him with his phone. He had two phones. They obviously, they have uh, retrieved uh, the three bombs that he had, two in the car, one at home. Nobody has yet answered the question, how did the AR-15 get up to the roof? Because no one yet has gone on record as saying, yeah, we saw him climbing up the five-foot ladder that he purchased that morning, that Saturday morning in Home Depot, because uh, when his body was found with its head blown off by the sniper team, he did have the receipt, and it said that that five-foot ladder had been purchased that morning in a Home Depot. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. But you still have people here at WABC, I call them the Beavis and Butthead uh, of broadcasting, who want to give all deference to Secret Service and the other law enforcement agencies, even though it has been a cluster you-know-what every step of the way. And I believe, let's face it, purposefully, come on. It's so obvious here. But then again, nobody wants to go there. And if you do go there, immediately they disparage you. Here is Bill O'Reilly, who has made a lot of money over the years writing history books that involve conspiracies. Whether correct or incorrect, they were great history books. I've read three of them. But he just completely discounts this. I have one question for you before we begin. Sure. All right. Does Sliwa consume LSD before <laughs> sit down with you in the morning? Notice there are more questions, Justin Ellick, about me taking LSD than there are about Aaron Rodgers finally back in jet training camp. What is that, Floral Park? Uh, drinking Hawawaski? How- what is that, Kava every day? What- what- what's that LSD uh, uh, lotion and potion that he, uh, hi- ayahuasca that he was uh, up in the Peruvian mountains uh, drinking and then recently came back from a trip to Egypt where he might have joined the Muslim Brotherhood. What the hell is going on? Making fun of me, but not Aaron Rodgers. And then, of course, my worst critic of all on this issue has been Sid Rosenberg himself, who says he hasn't been convinced, but every time I inch him ever closer to the fact that Trump was being set up, he just doesn't want any part of it, and he tries to shut me down. What the hell is wrong with you, Sid? A kid, right? A nerd, a dweeb gets 130 yards out for 26 minutes. They took pictures of him twice. 26 minutes. He's on his phone. He's staking out the area. He brings a backpack. He's got a gun. He's doing a bear crawl on the roof. Die, die, uh, uh, okay, so tell me, tell me I, know, I know what happened. So tell me this, then, because I think you sound crazy. I think you all do. Oh, you but think I fine. sound no, you crazy, sound crazy. Right? You sound crazy. I sound crazy. We all do. And yet increasingly, Justin Ellick, uh, Sid and Bill O'Reilly's original observation that it was just malfeasance and incompetence is being shattered. Completely shattered. You want to be listening at 7.15 in the morning because I'm going at Sid again with new information that has since been revealed and not by FBI Director Ray, who's keeping everything close to the vest. Oh, no. This guy's a smooth operator. He ain't revealing anything. But I certainly do. I will with Sid Rosenberg in the morning and watch how Sid will go ballistic. It's the Rip and Read. Talking about featuring Curtis Lewa. Talk Radio 77 WABC. Talking about this is the Rip and Read. Featuring Curtis Lewa. Now to the Bernard McGurk Studios of 77 WABC and Curtis Lewa. Then I'm moving out. Notice how crazy the news cycle is. Giggles Harris is at a sorority convention in Indianapolis and not in D.C. for BB. Our news department and every other news department completely avoided 
what the Secretary of State, Tony Blinken, had said over the weekend, which I can't repeat enough. I'm the only person playing this over and over and over again. He says within two weeks, the Ayatollahs in Iran will have a nuclear bomb. Instead of being um, at least a year away from having the breakout capacity of producing fissile material for a nuclear weapon, is now probably one or two weeks away from doing that. So with uh, Bibi addressing both houses of Congress, some Democrats turning their back on him, walking out, not wanting to listen to him, we know doggone well he's going to make reference to this and how he's got to take out that nuclear weapons supply because the Ayatollahs, again, I can't say it enough, have gone on record as saying, once we get our first two nuclear weapons, they know Israel has 80 in the Negev Desert that they claim is a chocolate factory. I know I passed it. Uh, they are going to drop one on Israel. They don't care if they get turned into a glass highway. They've gone on record as saying that with the retaliation that Israel will bring to Iran. And they're hoping to drop this second atomic bomb on us, the big Satan. Where else? New York. Why? Because this is where most of the Jews are. Nobody's covering that. Nobody. Hopefully, B.B. will bring that to everybody's attention, as he has in previous visits to the General Assembly in New York every September with the march of the dictators, the tyrants, the despots, when he actually had pictures of bombs and said they're 80 percent there. Well, now, according to Tony Blinken, in two weeks, they'll be 100 percent there. But nobody seems to care. But I'll continue to keep pounding away on this. The other story that received absolutely no attention here at WABC or from most other news outlets was that Tuesday morning before the break of dawn, the FBI out of the Eastern District launched a raid against a home in a gated community of Linda Sun and her husband in Manhasset on the North Shore of Long Island. People are saying, well, who's Linda's son? Why is this important? Well, number two, they conducted two raids that day, a primary raid, and then they came back for a secondary raid, filling up two trucks of information from that household. Linda's son uh, was last the deputy chief of staff of Kathy Hokum, who's full of nonsense. And as we know, her claim to flame is she's a grifter. She and her husband, that's all they do is fundraise, grift, and the, if you want to do business with the governor, you just subcontract her husband and you're basically pushing money in their directions because they share the money. They're grifters. That's number one. Number two, she has also been a Chinese liaison for who else? Of course, Andrew Evil Eyes Cuomo. That's how Kathy Holcomb discovered Linda's son which was through Andrew Evilize Cuomo, who's also part of this investigation, although he'll claim my fingerprints are not on this. This is all on Kathy Holcomb's watch. Well, that may be true, Andrew, but you're the one who brought her into state government. Why did you bring her into state government as an Asian liaison? If you notice, all of these raids, a preponderance of them by the FBI, are taking place against Asian aides of these elected officials. I surmise from this that it's because they have helped with their booster bags collect red Chinese money from groups that are organized here in America but are in support of red China, and red China is in support of them. That's why Eric Adams is in so much trouble with his... uh, Red Chinese liaison, openly and brazenly and boldly, Winnie Greco, who got raided by the FBI twice, both at her residences in the Bronx and at the um, the World Mall in Flushing. And they took away all of her items. And Eric Adams is in big trouble. He couldn't even remember how many trips he took to Red China. They've raised money for an arch in Sunset Park, which is traditional to... Uh, Asian communities, and there is no arch. Where's the money? Now, I guarantee you, this uh, line continues with Linda Sun. So, Andrew Evil Eyes Cuomo, you may think you can hide and sit this one out, but you were the first to elevate her into state government, into the executive mansion, quickly followed by the grifter of all grifters, 
Kathy Holcomb, who in response to this raid said, no comment. That tells you all you need to know.